Is this good light for? <laughs> there we go. It is 7:41. We are super thrilled to have Kelsey Grammer what? in the studio. Good morning, Kelsey. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Real quick, we met twice before. You're not going to remember this, but I'll try to refresh your memory a little bit. I had a friend named Mark that worked on Cheers. Uh So uh, late 80s, I think, I went out to L.A. to visit him, and he brought me into the set. And I walk in, and you guys are playing foosball. Yes, do you remember that foosball table? That was a customary uh, (laughs) pastime for us. That was so much fun. We got to. I played with you. You won't remember that, but we played for. A little it was, bit. It was quite bizarre at times. We would go late into the night. Very competitive. Uh, yeah, I remember oh, that. Very competitive. Ted Danson especially. Ted, George, Woody. Yep. Yeah. That, that was kind of it. It was that, that was sort of the four of us. I think that was really about it. Uh, but, yeah, we got sort of religiously foolish about it. Yes. <laughs> and, then, and then when you were filming the last episode of Cheers in Boston, because I was living and working mm-hmm. in Boston at a station called Kiss 108, you guys were all in town, and Woody Harrelson had an album out. And so Woody was playing a concert for my radio station, and you guys all came over to watch the oh. concert. So I was standing next to you watching the show. Again, you wouldn't remember that, but I tell people all the time, I met, I met Kelsey Grammer twice. Yeah, but what a great <laughs> – but, but the thing is, uh, what I loved about that is everybody really liked each other and took care oh, of yeah, each other. yeah, yeah. You no, know? I actually don't remember hearing Woody sing on that, that occasion, but that was a, that was a great uh, visit. One of my best friends was Andy Mose, who was the drive hour guy. In Boston during that time. Oh, okay. And uh, so I, I spent quite a bit of time with him. I, I was just back in Boston. My son's going to school there now. But uh, we had a wonderful uh, event then, the, the sort of the ending, the celebration, the last celebration of yes. Cheers. And, yes, yes. Uh, and you're a great bunch. And then the character continued. You've yes, been living with this character for a long time. He's, he's, uh, he's got long legs. Yeah. It's so great. <laughs> and so now the reboot, uh, season two, just mm-hmm. got uh, kicked off. How did you feel when they pr- approached you, Kelsey, about, let's do another Another Frasier show. Yeah, the original idea um, was about three years before Cheers ended, uh, Paramount approached me and said, we want to develop a show for you when you're done with Cheers. I said, when, whenever Sam or Ted says he wants to be done, yeah, we'll kick off something with you. So the announcement came, Ted was done after 11 seasons, and we started to develop some stuff. I met with a few writing groups, and I finally met with uh, uh, Angel Casey Lee, the Grub Street Boys, and they said... Um, Let's try to do a different kind of show. That's what I thought. Well, let's, let's just let Frazier die with Cheers. And we wrote a show about uh, sort of a mogul who was uh, a motorcycle uh, enthusiast. Okay. Like I was. I mean, they, they based it more on my, I, my on character, who you are. the sort of wildness yeah. that I was. Yeah. And uh, we, uh, he ended up having an accident. He was running an empire, basically sort of an investment empire from his bed <laughs> for about six months. And John Pike, who was the president of television at the time at Paramount, took me to dinner and he said... Uh, well, I've read it. I said, yeah, what would you think? He said, uh, I think a sitcom should be funny. <laughs> oh, Jeez. ow. I yeah. Thought, yeah, oh, okay. And then he just said, look, I want you to play Frasier. And I, I thought about it for a few minutes, and I said, well, okay, we have to do a few things. It's not going to be a show about his, his marriage with Lilith. Uh, but she'll still be in the picture because we had a child. And I said, he has to be, he has to be a responsible parent, but he's going to have to move. And, uh, and he was fine with that. Uh, just to get back at John a little bit, we did a show where Frazier was uh, bedridden <laughs> Okay. To, to just teach him that it could be funny. <laughs> it could be funny. <laughs> yeah. It could be funny. <laughs> so. so how many years did we do that show? That was 11. And then there was how much of a break between that and the reboot that's Tw- happening? 20 something years. Wow. I think it's exactly 20 years. So, maybe, no, maybe it's 19. So when they, <laughs> when they, what's 19 years? What, so when they reintroduced you to this idea, mm-hmm. Uh, all in at once, or were you hesitant? Because uh, I just want to say, no, this. it was my idea. Was they, it your they idea? They didn't introduce it to me. I, oh, I, I good. went to them and said, "It's time Let's for bring a Frasier back. reboot." Yeah. Well, thank you for that because yes. it is comfort food. Thank Let me you. tell you what, what we were talking about yeah. earlier this morning. Sh- that, it's it's such a comfort show. Yeah. When you sit down and watch you, and I think it's, I think it's because your voice is so soothing. It's soothing. It really is. <laughs> no, it's, I'm not making it. It is. It is. And. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's a it's a safe show to listen to watch in front yeah. of your whole family. Yes, it's comfort food. Yeah. It's always going to be safe. We we never. I mean, years ago, I I said as a sort of a just a, a point that we had to make. We would never have uh, a reference to a, a male genitals. Yeah, genitalia. Okay. Uh, just we're not going to do that. No blank jokes. And uh, everybody said, "Yeah, get it." I got it. Now we implied a couple. Yep, that's which but, is fine. Know, See that, that fine. but yeah. that's intelligence. That's better. I think, I right, think yeah. that's better, exactly. and that's kind of understood. So there's different layers of of, yes, of exactly. humor. I love that. So season two 
is happening right now. Right. And I just finished watching again for the second time, the first season. And we've got some new characters in there. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, Freddie's grown up. Yes. And, and, and we've got Niall's son in there. We've got a great, great, uh, you're right now teaching school right now, right? Right, yeah. Uh, I think and, he's going to stay at Harvard. I think yeah, that's you think so? Happen. You think so? You know, as long yeah. as Harvard doesn't send over a note and say, please desist. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> right. Like, but you're making us look better than we are, or be, or worse, either one. <laughs> are we going to see anybody, I know Perry came back uh, to be a part of the yeah. season one, which was great yeah. to see the two of you together sitting at a bar. It was. Sitting at a bar in Boston. How unusual is that for you, yeah. Fraser Crane? Uh, Crank? pretty, pretty <laughs> Of the mill, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. The average, yeah. But what do you think? There's going to be some other surprises for us in season two. Well, there will be. There's um, there's a couple of things happening. We're going to uh, we're going to Seattle in the show. Okay. Uh, we're going to go back and visit the radio station. So it's yeah. a bit, a bit just like, like here. Yeah, and uh, that that's the we shot at fifth. I think I think it's sort of airing in the middle. Yeah, well. yeah. So we'll we'll see or releasing however whatever they call it. Now. As a radio person yeah. watching Frasier for all those years, I was so jealous of. How nice your studios were! Oh, really? Thank because you. I'm not saying we just we just refurbished this one, but um, we've had some ugly moments in this room, uh, <laughs> and you have probably been to a lot of radio stations. I have. Were you surprised when you've gone into some radio stations about how it looked? Because uh, I was when I was a kid. I'm like, I can't believe is this well, what a radio station never, looked like? I never gave it much thought. Yeah. Um, I've done some radio hosting for, like, uh, there was a show called Mark and Brian out in L.A. that I did. Oh, Mark oh, and Brian, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they would go on vacation and let sort of celebrities do guest uh, fun. hosting. It was really fun. Yeah. And that seemed kind of like this. It was, yeah, yeah. It was pleasant enough. In our show, the the, the studios at KACL have, have gone to see just a bit. Gone to see. <laughs> yes, that's, gone that's, to see. They're they're having a little trouble keeping up the veneer. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> so, it's hard right now. I mean, yeah. media is going through a tough time. Yeah. yeah. Kel- Kelsey, how do you how do you balance uh, you know keeping the show fresh but also honoring the legacy of yeah. you know the show from twenty years ago? Well, it's just um, it was always to play up to the audience. We never we've never stayed with contemporaneous jokes too much. We didn't spend too much time you know worried about what the latest obsession was or the latest fad because they die every six months. You know, uh, so we never um, sort of pigeonholed the the narrative or the creative um, line to anything that was going on in our society in the moment. Mm-hmm. Things, fads, things that were catchy all of a sudden. So we, we avoided jokes about starlets or, or musical people or mm-hmm. things like that. But classics, we, you, could, you could make a Sinatra joke, you know, because yes. you know, he, he lives, he casts a long shadow across the Th- universe. That's right, yeah. that's right, yeah. Um, but other than that, it was always to do decent, clean humor. Mm-hmm. The kids could always watch it. Mm-hmm. Use some big fine words, you know? <laughs> some very so that, big fine. Yes, yeah, so very big words. Say what? What is that? And then someone in the room would say, "Well, that means this." And then, you know, there was a, a teaching opportunity, <laughs> not not in a condescending way, but uh, a way that was uh, encouraging people to think, "Well, hey, this is we can all work and think and and behave in this sort of elevated fashion." And yeah. Fraser's embrace of things that are extraordinary and his desire to bring everybody along to uh, a, a better way of living is kind of what's uh, charming about him and sustained. Yeah, I love it. I, I, one of the episodes said that uh, uh, the professor that hired you or the person that was head of uh, the school, called her, she called herself a craniac. I think I am, too. Oh, thank I you. Just, it's, Thanks, it's just, it, 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 really, <laughs> honestly, it's so good. Why do you think that your character is so beloved? Why? Because I know why. Because I think you're so naturally who you are, I authentic to yourself. I think he's lovable yes. because he loves yeah. I and mean, he is that. He loves life and he loves people. And he has always loved with this. When I first read the character the very first time, I thought to myself, he's completely in love with this woman, Diane. And that's what defined him. Uh, he's in love for the first time in his life. And he loves fully. And that hasn't really changed. He's had his heart broken a lot. Yes. But he lives on the edge of, of discovering, you know, his Garden of Eden all the time. That's what he's looking for. And that, so that's cool. what I love about him. Yeah, we love. My son went to your event last night. Oh, good. And I here's the message I got from him. I said, "Honey, I need to talk." He's 36 years old, mm-hmm. and I go, "Honey, I need to talk." He says, "Mom, I'm all about Kelsey Grammer today and Frazier, so I can't speak to you today. I'll talk to you tomorrow." <laughs> I went, and I thought to myself, I, "Yes, we watched that show together as he was growing up." Yeah. And so yeah. it's you know generations upon mm-hmm. generations upon generations. We are so glad that you were able to come in today. I want to I want to say this. Kelsey was, uh, uh, the fire alarm went off in your uh, yeah. hotel room. Three, 325. Fabulous. This morning. Oh, yeah. my gosh. <laughs> and uh, that, and did you ever get back to sleep at all? I actually did. It took me about an hour to kind of go, go through all the things I had to go through. Okay. Uh, 
But what was funny was once once the fire situation, the alarm situation was resolved. Right. They put the new tape on, which was like, we're so sorry for the inconvenience. The elevators will be reset any minute. Blah 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 blah. That went on for twenty five. Minutes. <laughs> oh jeez. So yeah, I, you had to leave the, the hotel. I mean, yeah, we yeah, had to you were outside. outside. Okay. It I wasn't. Suited, it, I suited yeah. up. I grabbed my passport. I thought I'll be okay with that. Oh uh, my and, gosh. Uh, but I kept dialing down after that, saying, like, would you turn this damn thing off, please? <laughs> you know. So nice of you to come in. I know that it's been kind of a rocky as, uh, overnight stay, but thank you for coming in today. It's and it's so good to see Kelsey Grammer, Fraser Crane, yes. in a studio yes. together. Thanks for visiting today. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you so good much. Good to see you. you. It's a pleasure. All right. 752. Let's check traffic.